Welcome. This is the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Now go ahead and settle down right now and don't leave the set. Whatever you do, don't turn the channel. We're going to take our time and actually be in about five different locations in the city of Jerusalem. I'm going to spread across the city. I want you to feel and to hear and to even smell the sounds and, and all the things that are happening there. This is going to be a broadcast that help. I hope you understand how Jerusalem has really become that cup of trembling, that burdensome stone unto all people, as the Bible said it would. And that's in Zechariah. In the Bible, the Lord told us it was coming, Zechariah. So if right now, wherever you're at, get ready for a fast-paced, moving broadcast from all across the streets of Jerusalem. I'll be right back in just a few moments. We're truly in the last days. I'm here in the city of Jerusalem, just outside the Dung Gate. This is the gate of the city that every time that Yeshua would come in, every time Jesus Christ would come into the city, he entered in through the Dung Gate. Uh, it's quite amazing, as today there's all kinds of festivals going on, Jewish weddings, celebrations everywhere. There are people just celebrating and enjoying this beautiful day in Jerusalem here in October. And uh, when you think about the Dung Gate, you begin to realize that Jesus Christ, he could have entered in the other gates, which would have been more fitting, would have been more of a, of respectable, if you will. But he always showed the humility. He always showed the humility by entering into the gate that all the garbage was taken out. If you think about it, all the garbage, the broken pots of clay, the, the, the sewage. Um, and, and so he entered this city every time through this. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah, he had no beauty that we should desire him. He was stricken and smitten of God, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid our face from him. You know, he, he knew, imagine this, every Old Testament prophecy Jesus Christ fulfilled of his coming. And also, all of the Old Testament prophecies, as well as Jesus' own prophecies, as well as the book of Revelation, are being fulfilled of his second coming. And he will be coming back to the city of the great king here in Jerusalem. And so it's exciting to be here today. It's exciting to know that you're in the city where Christ walked, preached, taught, healed the sick, coming in through the dung gate, but he still brought the miracles. One more point about the dung gate, so important. The broken pots, broken clay pots of a whole city go out to the dung gate to a place called the potter's field. And the potter's field is where, of course, Judas Iscariot would eventually be buried after hanging himself, uh, after betraying Jesus Christ. But the master potters would go into the potter's field and find broken pots that no one else thought was repairable. But if you were a master potter, you could take broken pots and you could put them back together again with the, the blood of a lamb. A blood of a lamb will help like a catalyst would reseal the pots. And Jesus Christ became, the, of course, he was the potter, the master potter. And he could take your or my broken life. We are jars of clay and he can take our broken lives and put us back together again. Only he can do it through the blood of the Lamb. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All right, well, as you saw right there, how busy. I mean, the streets of Jerusalem is, is very busy and very festive because you have the three religions of the apocalypse all converging into one place. The Temple Mount is so sacred to all three religions. And so what happens is, whether it's the, uh, the Muslims uh, with the Dome of the Rock, or it is the Jews wanting to go to the Temple Mount to pray, or wailing down at the wall, um, or it's the Christians and the tourists that come from all over the world who want to you know, literally walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. But with all of this passion, 
and I mean tension also. There's also a beauty about this entire ancient city. And biblically, knowing that when you see about the dung gate, for instance, where Jesus always came in, that's the way he entered in, through the gate where all the garbage was being taken out. Uh, the fact that there is, we're living in a time now, 2,000 years after Christ, and yet some of the passion and tradition is still going on like it was back then. Now, as we go forward in this broadcast, I'm going to move around, take you even to the modern streets of Jerusalem, and not only in the old city, but out in the new city. But the, get a feel for what's taking place. I'll be right back in just a moment. Are you serious? Are you serious? We're on the corners here in the streets of Jerusalem, right down from the Jerusalem Towers. And it's a very busy street, of course. It's just a little bit around 5 p.m. on a, uh, a very busy Wednesday night. The people are going about their business as normal. Although this has been a city that has experienced now three and a half weeks of extreme tensions and it's not seeming to stop. What we end up ha having here is a situation today where uh, actually a woman, a female terrorist, stabbed a Jewish man today and he pulled out a gun and shot her. And this tension is spilling over every cab driver, every person we meet on the street. Seemingly, they're on edge. And we're in a day, we're living in a time now like we've never been in before, the cup of trembling. And when you think about that in the book of Zechariah, when the Lord said that Jerusalem, he said, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling and a burdensome stone unto all people. It has to be something, if, if a cup is trembling, everything, everyone is feeling it. And that is the situation developing here in Jerusalem. Now, the great thing about Jerusalem is it's a city of so diverse cultures and a very friendly city. I mean, the Jewish people are just incredibly friendly, whether they be Orthodox Jews, whether they be Messianic Jews. And many of the Arabic people are very friendly. And so what you have here is a melting pot of, I want to say it this way, the three major religions of the world, the three religions of the apocalypse are coming together, trying to coexist in the same city. This is the city of the great King, Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the hope of glory, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And if you're watching now, I want you to just question and ask yourself, are you ready to meet God? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Do you know him as your personal savior? He is the way, the truth, and the life. So what we have today is a situation developing right here on the streets of Jerusalem where there must be peace, shalom. There must be peace. It can only come from the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God bless. I'll be talking to you a little bit later. Stay right with it. If you are watching this broadcast, I want you to come to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. God bless. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I've actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Are you serious? I mean, the streets of Jerusalem is just amazing. The people are amazing. The shops are amazing. I mean, and so if you ever go on a tour to Israel, I mean, you, you will never be the same because you take, on, you take in a lot of information visually, spiritually, emotionally because of the passion that is 
throughout the city. Uh, it's, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, if you go to the Jewish quarters, which is awesome because the, the, the shops are very, very well done and the merchandise that they have there for their, um, whether you like artwork, uh, you know, or you want certain clothing, uh, it's just, it's just incredible. And so, but at the same time, you know, you got this, especially when I was there, this major concern of security. I mean, especially when I was there in this past trip in October of 2015, there was uh, everyday stabbings and shootings and rioting in Jerusalem. I mean, in Bethlehem, Jerusalem was pretty good, except that there was attacks. Now, the tourists are not normally ever targeted because, you know, we're important, but, uh, and because of the revenue that brings into the nation. But as we get closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, Zechariah's prophecy is no doubt coming to pass. We'll be right back again. Check this out, what's happening in Jerusalem. I'm here at the Western Wall, and of course, there's a tremendous celebration going on here. I can tell you, I've been here many times. This, there is such a flow of love. There's such a, a festive atmosphere here today. Matter of fact, I was in the uh, tunnel right there near the, uh, right at the wall actually, went inside the tunnel. Uh, rabbis were in there praying, reading the Torah. Uh, celebrations were going on in there. And all over, there's a tremendous festive atmosphere here. Now, last week was the Feast of Tabernacles and the fourth and final blood moon of the super blood moon of the four blood moon tetrad. And so here we are in the midst of this entire atmosphere. People are just rejoicing, there, there's joy, there's prayer, and um, it's just incredible what takes place here in the city of Jerusalem, in this great nation of Israel. And you think about the ramifications of the end times. You begin to think about the fact that Christ is coming soon and he's going to return right into this very holy city. And matter of fact, he's coming for the whole world. There's a, a moment that's about to take place that people are not even aware of, but the Bible tells us that every eye shall behold him and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So there's a, I think about the two witnesses, how they will, in the book of Revelation, of course, in chapter 11, it talks about, in chapter 11, it talks about the actual blueprints of the third temple that's gonna be built right behind this wall up on the Temple Mount. And in the same chapter, it talks about the two witnesses that God will send who will begin to wear sackcloth and ashes, preaching in the streets of Jerusalem, and no doubt they'll be preaching right here. There could be no question, there's no, there's no better place with the multitudes that gather here on a daily basis. They will preach right here. And uh, it will be spectacular. The wind's picking up here. It'll be spectacular what takes place. Imagine these two witnesses. Now, as they preach though, the world will hate them because they will prophesy of uh, the water turning blood red and it will. They will prophesy of droughts and famines and pestilences and earthquakes and they will. They will increase even more than they are now and they are now increasing on a daily basis. So imagine the festivities and the, and the power. Everyone will see them, the Bible says. They will be killed and their bodies will remain in the streets for three and a half days. And then the spirit of life will restore them. It will be an unbelievable, they will raise from the dead because of the power of God, and the spirit of life of God, the resurrection power. They're the two witnesses of the resurrection. All right, so Jesus and the, and the, the fact that he gave his life on the cross for our sins and the fact that he rose from the dead to give us all mankind hope and salvation. So it's great to be here from the city of the great king, Jerusalem, here at the Western Wall. God bless.